folks, it's the Tall Turtle here, and welcome back to x Men 11. I know it's been a while since we've had an x Men 11 video, and that is primarily because I've been spending most of my time at the piano lately. I'm getting my piano tuned soon, and there are a few pieces I need to polish up because I like to record the day of my piano tunings, and so it's kind of like I'm cramming for a test. I practice and practice and practice and try to line up the music with the time of year. Twice a year I get the piano tuned. Then I schedule the tuning and then I cram and really make sure everything is polished up, ready to go. So that's why I haven't been doing flying and racing lately because my free time has been spent at the piano. I know I've been doing the Lego thing, but that's at like midnight or like after midnight. So that doesn't interfere with this at all. I will continue to do Lego videos though. So if you're enjoying those, thank you for watching. But today is all about the plane and X-Plane. Um, I am going to be introducing even more games to the channel because I've been getting game codes from people, which is awesome. So thank you for that. Um, that's not interfering with X-Plane, though. I'm still primarily a flight sim channel. I know that my flight sim videos are like every third day or less often. And the reason I've changed to that is because I want to give people a chance to actually watch the videos. If I do a flight video every single day and they're 45 minutes long, no one, well, some people do, but most people don't have time to watch every video. And I have a lot of dedicated people who've been with me for four years, so I want to make sure that everybody can watch every plane video so they're not as often, so that can work out for you. So anyway, let's hop inside first before we even get this thing started up. Um, first of all, I think the reason why I'm getting these sounds which you can't hear from in here, but I think it's because when I hit my hotkey to start recording, I think it's a key for the sim later. I just realized that. So I need to go through all the key bindings of the sim and adjust my recording hotkeys to be different. First thing we're going to talk about is my seating position in this airplane. Now, first of all, there's the 100 and then there's the 200 of the 727 version 3. And I noticed my seating is a little bit different in the 100 than the 200. But if you've been following my comments, I've been engaged in conversation with people, which I love, about my seating position. So I've spent a lot of time researching and looking at this. Um, also keep in mind, I've been having videos of both the 100 to 200, and I just noticed my seating positions are different. So I'm going to, whatever I do in this video, I'm going to hopefully remember to apply to the 200 immediately after. So... Um, the comments have been that I'm sitting too low and not in the right spot. I know I'm off-center in the 100, I just realized that, but I'm not off-center in the 200, so let's just move that over right now. So, seating position. People are telling me I'm sitting too low, and that's why I'm having a hard time landing. If you sit up higher, it's easier to land. Now, that I know is true, because back in my flight sim days before I took it seriously, I used to sit, like, way up here, so that I could see the runway. <laughs> which wasn't realistic, but that's what I used to do. So I do know that the higher you sit, the easier it is to land, even though something like this wouldn't be realistic. But that's what I used to do before I took it seriously. So when I determined this seating position, back in version 1, I confirmed it with FlyJSim. Now, when I say this seating position, I don't mean what we're looking at. So I'm actually going to mess this up, just so we don't think I'm okay. When I chose my seating position back in version 1, I cleared it with I didn't clear it. I talked to FlyJSim, and they said that was accurate. And just left it. And then version 2 came, version 3 came. Every time the airplane updates, you have to redo your presets. So then, when I started getting the comments that I'm sitting too low, I'm like, no, I'm not. Because that's what FlyJSim said. But I realized, because I'm always open to opinions and constructive comments, I realized, I think I've been lowering my seating position over the years, every time there's an update, and not realizing it until someone said something. So, in the 200, though... I asked my real-life pilot friends to send me screenshots of what they see. And it looks, for the most part, it looks like this. Now, some of those airplanes are 738s and things, but for the most part, it looks like this. So then one of the real-life pilots actually took a moment to watch my videos while they're in a hotel. You know, pilots live out of hotels, unless, because very rarely are you based out of where you live, right? So this particular pilot had time to watch a video, and they said, yeah, it's exactly, that's 100% spot on. I'm like, okay. So then people are commenting about watching YouTube videos and what the seating position looks like. Now that's a challenge because working with cameras myself with my dash cam and my piano cam and everything, what a camera sees is not what you see in real life. So unless you hold the camera up to your eye and you have a lens that matches your eye, it's going to be a little different. So I found a video on YouTube of a flight in the 727 with five different cameras in the cockpit. 
One of them made it look like the pilot was sitting way up here because the camera was up there. Another one, which was another pilot perspective in the same video on the same plane with a different camera, was way down here. So you can see what I'm getting at where camera view really can't tell you what eyes see. It just can't because in that one video, two different cameras, both pilot perspective were very different perspectives. So that kind of does that kind of makes it makes it moot, right? The whole what the camera sees. So back to what we're looking at right now. So first of all, I moved us over a little bit to the left because in this whenever when I set the preset in this update of this variant, that was too far to the right. So then I'm like, okay, well, a real life pilot says I'm fine. So I'm not going to change it. But I'm always open to change. I never say this. I'm never like, I'm right, you're wrong. I've never been that kind of person, except with my kids, because they're my children. <laughs> I'm the parent. But well, even with them, I listen to what my kids have to say. But so then I started thinking, okay, what if I do mess with my view, despite what pilots tell me? So then I started coming up here, look for the nose. I realized there's no nose. You can't really see the nose unless you're way up here, which is ridiculous. But what if we compromise? So this is where I was. What if I come up to see the bottom of the glare shield like that? Right, the bottom of the glare shield is right here. And then I tilt down a little bit like this. And let's give this a try and set the preset. And then I realized this is how I used to fly. <laughs> and then over the years, I've kind of been creeping down with my presets like this. So that was a huge thing. So thank you to the several people who've been commenting about my seating being too low. Now this seems too high, kind of, if we were to like look to the right. But not really, because I'm tall in my head. This would be like, the, my shoulders would be on the top of this chair. So thank you to those of you who are commenting. It made me relook at this. I did go into a thinking, well, Fly Day Sims said was fine, and Real Life Pilot Save is fine, but I'm always open to comments, and I'm always willing to change. So we're going to try like this, where we just see the bottom of the glare shield where it meets the window. Tip it down a little bit, maybe even a little bit more. And we're going to do this. Now, I have to remember to set this in the 200 advanced variant as well, and the freighter for that matter. So hopefully I remember to do that. But we're going to try this today, see how it goes. Um, and thank you very much to those who have made me look at this and think about it. The other comments have been about my lighting when I turn the lights on. I know my lights aren't exactly turned on exactly the right time because every company is a little bit different. And if you go online and if you Google people asking about lights for real life pilots, they fight about it. It's like I've mentioned that before. Like I kind of go to real life pilot forums from time to time. And you would think everything would be objective. This is the way. And it's not. People argue. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't understand what there's to argue about with flying. Like, you would think this is how you do it. But it's not that simple. So, um, and I, know, I know a lot of that's based on company rules. So we are going to do some changes to lights today. If I remember, I haven't updated my checklist yet. But we're not going to turn the runway turn off lights on right away. Um, we're going to turn navigation. Um more towards the end of the runway strobe and beacon i get those backwards so i lie. i know one of them you have to have as soon as you're about to start and that i think is which one beacon i think but i thought it was strobe see that's the thing i'm confused myself i can't remember i do a lot of research i write these checklists and then i review them and i'm like where did i get that information so anyway i feel like i'm sitting really high but that's what we're gonna do so that's a long introduction to the video but it actually had to do with flight today so there we are what are we doing where are we going? First of all, let's get this thing ready to board, and then I'll talk about what we're doing and where we're going. Um, what is, I need to get our landing altitude, 695 feet. Distance for fuel, 269 miles. I know the weather. We'll talk about the weather in a moment. Time of day, it's like 635 in the sim. And it looks like 640 already. We're going to try to take off by 7. We're not going to make it. Um, let's go over here, though, and let's do ground power. See, normally I do this stuff off camera but i wanted to talk about um wanted to talk about that other stuff all right external power on and stairs down whoa those lights are bright all right let's hop outside we'll talk about what we're doing and where we're going 
So we're in Duluth and we're going to fly to Green Bay. So we're kind of doing, we're not doing the five in a row with each aircraft that I've talked about, thinking about doing, but we are doing a type of thing where we'll do, where we'll focus on a plane so that we can really learn it, really get good at, well not good at it, but really get the hang of it. However, we will mix in other aircraft in between so that we're not doing like the fly J Sim 727 100 for like 10 videos in a row. We'll do like maybe eight or nine videos with this plane but we'll throw in a few other aircraft but this will be the focus and then we'll move on to another plane for example we already did this with the ryan navian where we focused on that for a half dozen flights or so but then we threw in some other stuff so that's what we're doing like we started in fargo we flew to green bay now we're gonna go from, i'm sorry we went from fargo to duluth and i'm going to from duluth to green bay and then i'll tell you what's coming next when it comes so we're in Duluth for this leg to Green Bay, 206 nautical miles. I actually did the flight plan in GIMP, so there it is on your screen. Normally I handwrite it because doing this, what you see here, takes way too long. But I just wanted to try. That's our flight plan. Very simple, 206 nautical miles. World of weather is turned on. It's clear skies here in Duluth. However, it's like 24 knot wind or something or 24 gusts or something. Green Bay is worse. It's kind of stormy down there, over there kind of stormy over there i guess it is over and down from minneapolis but it's stormy same crazy winds so it's going to be crazy crazy landing again um we are going to use the charts as realistically as possible for green bay i did check the weather but i forgot to check the wind plus it changes on me every stinking time i think the last three flights in the row of this thing the weather's changed on us so once we get the atis we will decide what runway to use and I'll pause the sim so I can go over to my charts and pull up the right charts and everything because the approach happens so fast I can't just let the autopilot go and then get my charts. We'll miss it. Plus, I have to start another recording because it'll corrupt it. All right, so what are we doing? We are going to take off. We're going to take off. We're going to get loaded here. So let's stop spinning around, pull up the paper checklist. Let's hop inside. The first thing we're going to do is passengers and fuel, which I believe is this one. Um, I don't think we need this many people today let's get rid of some of these people here not get rid of them it's just you know they're not that many people flying from green bay to duluth or duluth green bay um distance 260 nautical miles so we're going to do the fuel at it tells you right here 216 we're going to go 400 because i'm a scaredy cat in fact i feel like 426 way more than we need all righty let's get rid of that Let's hop over here, turn the battery on. Let's turn some of this lighting down because this is way brighter than we need. Which one is it? There it is. No, we want, we want that one. It's um something else that's causing this. No, we want that on. Uh, which one is it? Nope. I had all these memorized, but I don't use them often enough. So what's causing all this ambient lighting? Because if I turn this down, it's still bright in here. That's just the gauges. Hmm. I don't know. Not sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but we do need those on. And I used to have all this memorized, like I said. I don't anymore. I don't use them often enough. Alrighty, what's, what are we going to do? We're going to trip the CPU and get the CPU going. So let's get the... Actually, you don't have to do that in this version. You did in previous versions. But anyway, let's get this thing warmed up here. Then we'll continue. And while waiting for that, we will turn these test lights off. I can remember which way it is. It's that way, I guess. And we should see the temp drop any second now. There it is. So now we can do field and generator to close, close, close. There we go. And external power should turn off on its own, and it did. All right, so lighting now. Of course, you want logo. Of course, you want wing. Well, it's a beacon or strobe that you do when you're hanging out before you start your aircraft. I have to look it up because I can't remember. Let's do beacon for right now. Um, let's see. No smoking and seatbelt. There we go. Emergency lights armed. Stall warning test. And window heat on. APU bleed confirm open, and they are. Cooling doors confirm open. 
disconnect the air cart and GPU. And just hear the wind down. Whoops. And there we go. Um, DC meter to ESSTR. And in this version, it is already. Gasper fan on. Right AC pack on. Air pressure. We're going to see. 206 nautical miles is really short in this plane. It's going to be really fast. I don't think we're going to get higher than 18,000. Uh, let's do 20,000. Landing altitude was 695, so let's change this Whoops. to 700, like that, and switch to ground. There we go. Flight plan, all right. So, flight plan, very simple. I think we only have one VOR. Yeah, we do. So we're going to, well, we're going to leave this one. So first of all, we're going to leave Duluth, which is 112.6. Like so, we're gonna leave that at 116 degrees. 116, keep going. Whoa, there we go, 116 degrees. And then we're gonna fly towards Rhinelander, which is 1092. I've been to Rhinelander many times. We'll put 1092 in here so we know when we're picking it up. Then from Rhinelander, we're gonna go to the Green Bay VOR, which is 115.5. So later this will work. Slant Alpha, of course, but no ATC with intersections. So we're going to leave Duluth at 112.6 at 116 degrees. 83 nautical miles in. We're going to switch to the Rhinelander VOR, which is 109.2. After that, we're going to fly 37 nautical miles and then switch intersection. Oh, two intersections. So that's going to be interesting. Oh, no, it isn't. One intersection. 115.5. Boom. So this will always stay here. This will switch to 115.5 eventually. Actually, be that one. We use nav 2 to know the distance to the next VOR, and when we pick it up, we use nav 1 for the autopilot. When we get, as soon as we get that ATIS and we get the runway in use, we will pull up the appropriate charts. No matter what, we're going to fly towards the Green Bay VOR. And then from there, we're either going to leave the Green Bay VOR to land on runway 18, or we will break off from the VOR and be our own ATC to vector ourselves somehow to whatever approach we're going to use. It looks like runways 18 and 36, that's the big one. Um, 6 and 24 is the tiny one, so hopefully it's one of the big runways in use. But anyway, that's how we're going to do it without ATC. It takes a little bit of finagling, but we've been able to do it many, many, many times. Um, we, Because of the weather, we'll use autopilot down to minimums. And then we will land like that. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. AP altitude is what? 18,000? 20,000 we're going to do, I think I said. So let's bring this up to 20 because we'll be cleared right up there right away. We're in Duluth. We'll just go right up to whatever. Alrighty, ultimate barometer. So let's see if there's an ATIS. There should be an ATIS at this airport. If I recall correctly, IIRC, um, click there, ATIS, 124, 100, come down here, um, hello, there you go, 124, 100, 124, 100, and do we get an ATIS? There it is. Um, wind 280 at 13, gust 20. Wow, clear. Altimeter 29er, 79er, 29er. There we go. Runway 27, of course, because wind is 280. Alright, let's get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. Runway 27, piece of cake. We will just. Oh, what are we going to do? We're going to. Hmm, this is going to be an interesting pushback, isn't it? Runway 27 is right here. So we'll just push back into this thing. Because I don't think we would make a pushback this sharply. So we'll just push back here. Runway 27 is there. Very, very, very simple. All right, so that is that. Next thing is to close the rear stairs. Just shift F1, and they'll close. Although we had a jetway, so I didn't really need the, air, the rear stairs. But we used them. Alrighty, come back over here, turn on the 8, pumps de fuel, 
like so. And sorry about my washing machine in the other room. It's in spin cycle and it just got very loud. Turn off the AC packs. All bleed valves confirm open. Start better pushback. And then we'll start our engines. So here we go. Better pushback. Let's see if I can get this smooth. I remember the last video when it spun around. It spun around. It spun around. Yeah, that was pretty funny. All right, here we go. Um, yeah, basically this is what we want. So let's do enter to accept. Call through menu and ready, which will be right now. Start pushback. Ground and cockpit. Toe is driving up. Toe is driving up. Oh, I see it. It's going to go right through the building, right through the fence, right through the vehicles. Super amusing. Let's actually take a screenshot of this because that's a nice view. This is a nice view too. Let's take a screenshot of that. All right, where were we, Mr. Pushback Guy? All right, just about connected and ready to go here. Release parking brake. So here we go, parking brake is that one. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. And we may start engines. All right, so we're going to start with two. Goes to ground. We come down here. As soon as he gets to 25 on N1, he introduced fuel. There is 22, 24, 25, introduce fuel, and you come back. And once it stabilizes, you can start engine three, but let's check the pushback first. Glorious, glorious sight. Oh, and we get to watch an airplane land. How awesome is that? That's so cool. Where do they touch down? Where are they gonna touch down? Right on the touchdown zone, I assume, since it's AI. Yep, of course. All right, back up front. All right, engine number three, come down here. And 22, 24, 25. And let's check our pushback again. Still pushing back. And still beautiful scenery. Engine one. And that spin cycle is still going on the washing machine. It is so loud. Set parking brake. Parking brake is there. Disconnecting tow and introducing fuel for engine one now. And we will sit here and wait for the hand signals. Man, that looks like a high view, but I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. All right, disconnect and hand signals. Hand signal will be on the right and will see me next time. And they're going to drive away. There we go. See you later, alligator. All right, hydraulic A and B can come on now. He is already on in this version, so let's turn B on. Uh, close three generator ties. Close up, close, and close. Galley power on. Both AC packs on. Cargo heat to normal. Essential powers to generator. Why am I losing essential powers to generator? There we go. AC meters to bus tie, already are. Make sure there are no lights illuminated. This ducky thing is a bug, Jack said. Otherwise, nothing else is on, which is good. Uh, fuel heat off, already should be in this version, and it is. Anti-ice, I haven't learned how to do yet. Pedo heat, or probe heaters in this case, goes like that. Trip the APU, whoa. Trip the APU, weather just updated, and turn it off. And listen for that scary wind down, but everything should still be running. Pressure to flight. Uh, cabin control, tempo keep to auto, gas per fan can come off, and APU bleed closed. Check air and reference bugs. Let me make sure my engines are still okay since I hit the wrong button. Okay. Reference and airspeed bugs. In other words, the V card for V speeds. Uh, what do we want here? We want to set bugs. All right, so we're super light. So 102. We got 20 flaps. 102 at 20 flaps. Flaps 20 is 4 o'clock. Very simple. Um, I have this thing on. I know the TCAS. I mentioned the TCAS. I know the TCAS won't show anything because I don't really have any other craft. However, the radar should work. I, this, I have the weather update in this airplane. And I saw there's the weather of the radar working. Okay, that has not worked yet. Either that or I just haven't been patient enough. Good. See, this works. Hey, maybe it'll work in Green Bay because it's stormy. Ooh, we'll have to, um, we'll have to, um, 
try that. I haven't thought about that before. Alrighty, moving up. We're going to turn taxi lights on, but we're not going to do the runway turn off yet. Let's do the strobe now. The navigation of the runway. Alrighty. Uh, model brakes RTO. Start the flaps coming down. Um, let's see. I'm going to make some notes on my checklist. No, I'm not going to make notes on my checklist. I'll do that later. Alright, let's see. And then taxis on the runway. So our taxi is going to be very simple. Let's actually use this view. We're just going to go... Oh, hey, my rudders... No, nope, my rudders are stuck to the left. Why are my rudders stuck to the left? Let me reset them. Oh, no, not, now they're halfway through. Let me just recalibrate them. Give me one moment. Alright. Didn't have to recalibrate. I just unplugged them, and the rudders work fine, which is kind of normal. Alright, let's see here. Where were we? Uh, let's keep the flaps coming down, take the parking brake off, and let's start taxiing out to the left. Come on. There we go. Very simple. I think we need one more flap or two more flaps. We'll need one more after this. Alright, come on. Spinning, spinning. Flaps are already down now where we want them to be. And just like that, we're at the end of the runway, so let's stop here. Whoa, so the parking brake, that was kind of dramatic. All right, let's see, end of runway, landing lights on, landing lights on, RTO confirmed. We don't need the runway turn, runway, runway turn off lights right now. Navigation lights on, check the flaps. They're at 20, check the trim just click the green band and check the time which is in this case 708 we are behind schedule Alrighty, we're just gonna roll out and have a start here um i don't know if i really like the seating position it just seems so high but we can see the bottom of the glare shield let's see can we lower it just a little bit let's do that let's lower it to there yes like I said, I just have to remember to do the same thing in the version 200 advance as well as the freighter. All right, we're going to roll out. We're just going to roll right on, roll right into a takeoff here as soon as we get straightened out. And here we go. 97% and 1, not 100, unless you really, 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 really need to. And there's 97 there. And this heading bug all the way around because that's what we need to do. Wow, it's really hard to go straight from sitting so high. I'm used to <laughs> being so much lower. Off the ground, no tail strike. Gear coming up. Flaps coming up, bringing the throttles back. And flaps coming in, stay on that schedule, stay on that schedule. Oh, these gusts are insane. Oh my word. More throttle. Let's get us up to 250 here so we can engage autopilot in a moment. I just wanted to hand fly in this crazy weather. Oh my gosh. This is very difficult to do. Oh my. Alrighty, flaps are in. Let's start our turn to the left. And let's keep the nose down a little bit so we can get up to 250. Then we'll engage autopilot. Wow, this wind is ridiculous. Wow. This is amazing. Keep the nose down. Let's keep that speed up. Throttles at 92. There we go. Turn all the way around. And then we'll meet up with this VOR. And fly over. St. Louis River. Yep, I know. There's our VOR. We're flying right over the VOR. We'll meet up with it in a moment. We just have a big U-turn to make. Holy moly, look at this wind. Look at this airplane shake. Look at this airplane shake like crazy. Wow. Let's level off now. Then we'll meet up with this VOR, see if this can go back and forth. Cause we just, we literally like we're circling on top of the VOR. So it's kind of all over the place. See it flip? Oh my gosh, this is nuts. Wow, all right, let's engage autopilot. I'm trying to hold it up oh, for smooth. Engage, alt select, IS hold, which is that way, and nav lock, which is that way. We should be hands free flying now. And we are, there we go, 250. And flying towards the VOR smoothly, although it's gonna S curve a little bit because we're so close. And we're flying up to 20,000 feet. Check the engines. 
Um, 92% where we want to be. Very nice. See, it's just going to S curve because we're so close to that VOR. <laughs> That's just how the radio works in these old things. Flaps are in. Gears off. Disarm the auto brakes. And we are all set. We'll just let the radio and autopilot fight itself. How hilarious is that? 10,000 feet already. It goes that fast. So landing lights can come off. That can come off. That's still on. And now we can crank up to 280. 50, 60, 70, 80. It'll nose down a little bit to get that speed, but that's okay. And what are we doing? Okay. Flight plan. Just double check everything here. Um, let's see. Gear off. Auto brakes off. Auto pack to cut out. I think it already is. So we're cut out to auto. Cooling door. That's fine. Barometer 18,000 feet. We will worry about that in a moment. Landing lights already off. Seatbelt off at cruise. No, when you fly with me, the seatbelt light is always on. All right, so we're done. All we're going to do now is just wait till we pick up our destination, ATIS. Oh, and there's the weather we we're talking about. Wait until we pick up our destination, ATIS, so we know what runway we're going to use. Always, that's it. When we get to 20,000 feet, this thing will speed up. And we have to keep an eye on the speed because we will overspeed at this speed. I have a few VOR changes to make, which we will do on camera. That's why these videos are so long. This will not be a two-part video. It's too short for that. But basically, when we get to 83 miles away, we're going to switch to the next VOR. So I will give you a little bit of sightseeing, and I'll see you 83 miles. I'll see you in 70 miles. So we're down here and we are going to use heading select. Whoops, I better set heading before I use heading select. So let's go right there. Heading select. And then we're going to go towards the Rhinelander VOR, which is 1092. And we're going to head there at 100, 121 degrees. So let's go to 121 degrees. And we'll let autopilot do its thing to get us over there. Slight turn and intersection. So that means the next VOR to get ready is 115.5. We'll point there with nav 2 so we can see where it is. Nav 1 will get ready to go, and then this will be our last VOR already. So um, when we get to Rhinelander, we're going to exit at a different radius. So we'll keep the same um, frequency but different direction, and then we'll have another change. So we have one, two changes, and then we got to figure out our approach so what do we need to do here we are set for 43 miles again we're 20,000 feet up so we're uh, about four feet uh, yeah we're about four feet <laughs> four miles up so this will never get below four so a little bit more sightseeing and i'll see you in 40 miles or so for another vr change see you then All right, we're about to reach Station Passage, so um, I already did 299 or 218,000, by the way. I already set our heading bug, so we are going to 
Do I need select to keep the same radio? But the radial is, what is it? 138. We're going to leave out 138. So let's get this ready to go. And then as soon as we have station passage, we can switch over to 138. Also keep in mind, there we go. Also keep in mind, um, uh, well, this is going to serve as top of descent. So let's get that going. It doesn't pick it up yet. That's interesting. Maybe it's going to readjust. It might go back and forth. I know it's a turn to the right a little bit, not much. So maybe that'll change for us. That was weird. Why won't look pick it up? Why won't you see it? Um, it's behind us, obviously. There we go. But still, why won't look pick it up? There it is. Okay. Let's do nav lock. It's going to do a zigzag thing because that's how it works. Um, this serves as top of descent. All right, so what do we need to do? We need to come down to, let's go down to, well, we don't have our charts yet. We don't know which way we're going to go. Let's set autopilot for 1,000 feet for now, and then we'll adjust accordingly. Uh, I'm going to set this to 320 until we get below 10,000 feet. Then we got to slow down. So we're going to come over here. We're going to do the new alt select, new IS hold, bring throttles back just above the horn and there we go we may or may not need spoilers we don't know yet um our speed we're flying at like well this is top of descent based on the math we what we do if we haven't watched these videos before is we go f take 15 seconds on the clock count how many miles that is multiply by four in this case we're going eight miles per minute um, we need to come down 19,000 feet, so that's 19 minutes at 8 miles per minute. 9 times 18 is 100 something, but I know that we end up slowing down so we don't come down as soon as 9 times 18. So what I did is I slowed this down in my head to like 4 miles per minute or 5 miles per minute. Came up with 95 as my number. So again, we kind of blew through that top of descent, but I know in reality we're going to slow down so much that we don't want to come down too soon. It's the numbers versus experience and not doing the numbers the way you're really supposed to do the numbers. I just get in the ballpark, okay? And then we fine-tune as we go. And we don't have ATC, so we're not going to have anybody say, you know, descend to 8,000 feet. It's just going to be whatever we figure out on our own. And I'm very curious about this new, um, this new, whoops, let's get some throttle in there. This new angle looks very strange to me, but we'll figure it out. I'm using throttles now to control our rate of descent because the autopilot hold is at 2 or 320. We do not want to descend more than 1,000 feet per minute. We'll get there way too soon. Um, what else was I going to say on that? I can't remember. Something else I was going to say about... Wasn't there? Oh, the weather. This weather is changing every like two minutes. I thought I had to set every 15 minutes, but it must be like every three because we get clouds, no clouds, clouds, no clouds. Hopefully weather doesn't update as we're trying to land that's the only problem otherwise we are set now right let's descend a little more steeply everything is good to go um we're 59 miles off from the airport at 37 miles from this vor we're going to have an intersection again and change radios so i'm just going to sit here in the cockpit while we fly these 10 miles it's only going to take a minute and then i'll come back with you here and we will do our last VOR change. And then hopefully we'll get an ATIS soon too. That'd be very nice, wouldn't it? All right, we're almost at intersection. So let's put the heading button, get that ready to go. Also the ATIS, I finally popped up on the map. It's the same as Duluth 124.1. So we're just gonna keep it on 124.1. And when we get it, we get it. Um, radio change, one, whoop, heading bug first. So we're set to 115.5 and we are gonna approach 115.5 and I dropped my paper. We're going to approach it at 140, which is pretty much what we're doing now. So let's um, go back to Navlock. Simple. Now all we're going to do is keep coming down roughly 1,000 feet per minute. I'll recalculate, top, but I'll recalculate our descent as we go every couple minutes. Otherwise, we're just going to sit here. And as soon as we get ATIS, there it is. We're going to adjust everything. And we'll um, be our own on ATC, which can be difficult. All right. Two nine or eight four two nine or eight four. Why is altitude getting mad? One thousand feet, seventeen thousand, whatever. That's weird. 
Do I need to redo the alt select? I don't think I should. I know the barometer makes it mad just when I do that sometimes. Oh, that's all fine. All right, what else are we doing? Um, what, what runway is it? Arriving 18 and 24. 18 and 24. 24 is not a good choice because it's really small compared to 18. Right? That'd be 18, that'd be 24. 24 has an ILS though. But it's a short runway. But we are on the 727. We can land on anything. I would prefer an ILS because it's supposed to be cloudy and windy. Um, nine. Okay, it's not as bad as it was when I started. It's only nine degrees from 240. Let's try to do runway 24. Let me pull up the chart. First of all, let me make sure everything else is good. Our descent is okay. We're flying in towards the airport. We can turn this off now. Um, we're all set, right? Everything is good. We're going to slow down to 250 in a minute. Okay, good. Let me pull up the charts and decide which run we're going to land on. And I'll have a fancy little cut, or a not fancy cut, and I'll be right back. All right. Weather is still updating. It's getting really stormy, as you can see, which is why I want to use instruments if I can. So runway 24 is not ILS. It's localizer back course. I've never done a back course before. Doesn't that mean I just do this backwards or something? I don't know. I've, I've heard of back course. I know in the fancier airplanes, there's a back course button you have to push. Because it's like the backwards radial or something. I don't know. Well, we're going to do the best we can. So we need to approach at 2,400 feet. No, 2,100 feet. So let's change this to 2,100. That's the number I was looking for earlier. Let's start slowing down. Oh, let's not slow down quite yet. Um, well, I'm done with my flight plan because now it's all on the chart. So I have my chart up here from AirNav. 2,100 feet for autopilot. We're going to approach at 200. But how do we get there? Okay, there's a Green Bay VOR. If we approach, if we leave the Green Bay VOR at 102 degrees, we intercept at Prost, which is only three miles away, which is too short for this plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the VOR at 102, Green Bay VOR, in 15 miles. Then we're going to cross over the waypoint, make a circle, right? Because, again, we don't have ATC to get us there. So we have to get us there on our own, and that's where it gets complicated. Okay, so we're going to leave the Green Bay VOR 102, cross the waypoint, cross the fix, and make a circle. And then hopefully that'll be enough distance. Yeah, we'll give ourselves enough distance. That part's up to us. And this runway is not that short. It's 7,700 feet, which for this airplane is nothing. No big deal. Okay, so let's slow down to 250. Eh, let's not slow down to 250 yet. Um, I think I'm going to miss anything. I don't know what the, the back horse thing. The localizer is 109.5. But does that mean for in air this whoa if weather just updated? Let me check my weather here. Why is it updating so fast? It's set to refresh once an hour, but it's like refreshing constantly. Good grief. Okay, so what's this in this airplane? I know you're all laughing at me because I know 150 of you know what back course means for this aircraft. And like I said, in other aircraft you set up your everything and then you hit back course. It's just a button. But when we don't have that backwards, so do I still come in at 242 with the same radio or with the same frequency, right? Uh, I have a lot of research to do. Okay, I'm going to slow us down at 10 grand. Let's turn lighting lights on now. Turn everything on. Everything on. Get that set. And where's my... I have a thing... Reset for something. There it is. Spoilers don't need them, but I'm going to arm them anyway. Or in case we do, we might, whatever. We might need them. I'm going to arm them anyway. Good grief. Okay. That should be our approach checklist, which I didn't even look at because I'm thinking about this back course thing. Seatbelt on, barometer, we got that. Lights, everything. Yes, 10,000 feet for landing lights on. Um, auto brakes, armed, spoilers armed. Speed down to 180 for the approach or less. Yeah, no problem. We'll get the V refs in a minute. And why are we turning? Because we can. All right, I'm going to start slowing us down and recalculate our descent rate. Make sure we're in the ballpark, and I'll be back with you in a moment. As we slow down, we're about 
to, um, well, we already crossed over the VOR, so <laughs> we're going to use any select, and we're going to leave the VOR at 102, which is this way. I spent so much time worrying about that back course thing that we blew right over the VOR. All right, and we're slowing down still. I'm not going to use spoilers quite yet. So we just crossed the VOR at 12,005. We're probably too high, maybe. I don't know. We're just going to cross this VOR and leave at 102. And then we're going to make a big loop somehow. So what I'm going to do... How are we going to know when we cross... Oh, well, there's the VOR there. The VOR is not at the airport. I'm going to say, how do we know when we're going to cross the ILS? Let's just go this direction. Where's 102? That's 90. Let's go... No, let's stop. Let's go this direction. Let's tune in. We have... Because we have heading select. Let's tune in 1095. Let's put in 242 for the course. And we will see where this ILS is at. Hopefully. Hopefully we'll cross ILS soon. Because it's seven, it says 7.3. Oh, we already crossed it. Oh, good grief. No, we're, no, we didn't. Yes, we did. Wait a second. It's 7.3 miles from the VOR to the fix. We're at 9, which means we already blew over the fix. Because we're at 9, and it's only 7.3. So let's start turning... And um, try to find this with radios because we're 15 miles away from the runway. Let's see if we can do this. We don't have ATC to help. That's our big problem. That's our big problem. Is we don't have ATC to help us. We got to figure this out. So we already blew way past the fix because that's more than 7.3. We're too far for ILS to pick up. Because you blew by it. So let's... Hmm. Let's zigzag a little? Gosh, I want to try to think this through without looking at the map. But we might have to in this case. Speed is good. 10,000 feet. We're going to keep coming down at the same rate. Yeah. We're so far. Okay, we're just... We're simply just too far from the runway for pick up by less. So we know we're parallel. We know we're perfectly parallel to the runway. We're just too far to the south because we blew through it. So let's go perpendicular here. And because we're 15 miles out or more, 18 miles out, we should run right across the ILS. Um, well, we, yeah, I would assume we picked it up 19 miles out. What I'm hoping to do is not go far. There it is. Glide slope. Boom. Got it. Okay, so we're going to head towards it now. And then once we get it, we'll come in at less than better than 40 degrees off there it is it's back course though we're not no we're no we're south of the runway that's what the back course thing must be is that it's backwards what if i go opposite 242 what is opposite 242 62 degrees so if i go 62 degrees there we go that's what back course means okay good okay good that's what back course means all right, so we have to approach this at 40 degrees or better, or else it won't pick up glide slope, see? But we're so far away from the airport, I don't want to start coming in now because we'll come in right over the runway, you know what I mean? Because we're so far away, I don't want to start coming in towards it. So let's do this. Let's go a little bit this way and then we'll, yeah, now we're too far away. Okay, let's start getting closer. We'll go in like this then, and then as it starts to move, maybe we'll try to do 40 degrees or better. Since we're so far away, if we did 40 degrees or better now, we would come across a runway instead of curve into the runway. Hope this is going to work. Hope it is. Watch, we're 8,000 feet up, and we're going to have to get gear and flaps out soon. Let's start slowing down a little bit more here, right just above flap. We'll do first flap right there. Let's get our V cars going. We are doing so much at once. Landing, set bugs. 30 degree flaps, which is, which is what? Um, five o'clock. 30 degree flaps. 111 plus five plus gusts. So we're going to touch down just below the second flag, actually. Oh gosh, we just blew over the runway. Oh goodness. See, I'm doing too many things I want. So let's turn all the way around while we slow down. This is why we need to slow down. We're going to slow down to 180. We have to. We have to. Or else we're going to overshoot again. Alright, let's get 
once it starts going again, because we're 14 miles out, we're okay. We're okay. We should have enough room to do this. Once it slows down, I'm going to start getting flaps and gear down. Everything else is set. So just flaps, gear, manage speed, and line up with this runway. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Oofta. But we're 7,000 up. And we need to be, what, 21? Yeah, that's okay. All right. First set of flaps coming down. And we're not going to use spoilers yet. Or should we? Yeah, let's use spoilers. Because <laughs> we're 12 miles out. Gear coming down. And... Let's hopefully we can line up with that again. Light slope isn't liking us. There we go. Get some throttle going so we don't screw up. IS should hold us there. We'll keep the flaps where they are. Gears down. That's why the flag went away. Okay, we're losing. We're getting the runway now. So let's head back. I guess I could do this manually. It might be easier to do this manually than use autopilot at this point, wouldn't it? Um, we're way too high. That's why we can't use autopilot to get us going. That's what's happening. But we're still far enough away we should be able to do this. Okay, so we're going to line with the runway using autopilot in the heading bug. Because glide slope is not picked up. And there's the runway. Good. I'm looking at gauges. Am I looking out the window? I'm sorry if you want to be looking and get sightseeing, but there's too much going on right now. 5,000 feet. We are way too high, right? 5,000 feet. Yeah, we are. We're just going to use spoilers to how we get down. I'm using heading bug to get us lined up with the runway. And then we should be good here. Nine miles out. Let's have a quick look outside since we can. I don't know why it's beeping at me. Probably because we're coming down so steeply and spoilers are out. There's not a whole lot to see anyway because we're in the clouds just like I said, which is why I want to use this ILS. Nine miles out. Uh, we should probably start slowing down more. We should, shouldn't we? Let's slow down more with the next set of flaps. This is not going to be happy. There you go. Let's line with our runway. Still no glide slope because I'm way too high. Or maybe because of the back course thing. Because this is localizer, not ILS. That might be the problem. Let's hand fly this thing. This is ridiculous. Goodness. All right. Spoilers coming in. Keeping an eye on her flaps and her speed. Next set of flaps. Yeah, so there's a localizer and ILS. They're not exactly the same. I can't remember the exact difference at this point. Whoa. Throttle, 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 throttle. All right. Throttle, throttle, please. Look how slower speed is. And one more set of flaps. Configuration is good. We're a little high. We're way too high, but we're seven miles out. So we'll be fine. We need to get down to 21. We need to lose a thousand feet um, in a couple miles. Point down and get that speed up. Throttle so we don't descend as much. Otherwise, we have a really strong crosswind. I can feel it. Even though it shouldn't be. Wind is 240 and it's runway 24 at heading 242. So a little bit of crosswind from the left, I guess, technically. But all right. We're slower than we want to be. Point down and get that speed up. Yeah, now we're climbing because I goosed the throttle a little bit too much. This would be a good touchdown speed. So how are we going to touch this thing down? We're not going to worry about crossing and landing because the wind is only two degrees off. We are going to approach out that second flag just before touchdown pullback throttles. Let the airplane land itself. We have plenty of runway for land long. Why are we climbing? Got to watch the gauges. All right, we're going too slow, so point down. Way too slow. Point down. Oh, we just blew over the run. There's our airport right there, isn't it? It's all fogged in. I didn't see it till now. Now we're, yeah, we screwed up because I was so busy doing something else. We need to go around, obviously, <laughs> because we just went over the airport. <laughs> we're just too high. I've never come in too high, have I? I always come in too low, 20 miles out. But we're too high. So let's turn around. We know where the runway is. We do not have a glide slope. We're going to turn around, keep that speed up. Oh my gosh, keep that speed up. Try to get back down to 2,100 feet. You know where the runway is. We're going to do a go around in a short final approach here. Come on. Wow, this wind is so bad. I can't control this thing. This thing is all over the place. 
So we're getting a glide slope because we're on the other side of the runway. Doesn't matter because the back horse doesn't have one. We're going a little slower than we need to. So a little bit of pointing down to keep our speed up. And throttle so we stay kind of level now. Okay. Now we know we're parallel to the runway. Because we made it all big U turn. So let's wait for that distance to get out again. See how it's seven miles? Yeah, that distance will climb. So we know we're going away from the airport. We know we're south of the runway. And we're getting blown south for some reason. I know I should have gear and flaps in probably for this go around, but you know what? There's one of me in a three person aircraft. And this is really difficult. <laughs> This is not easy. There is Lake Michigan in front of us. All right, well, let's hold our altitude about like this. But let's keep our speed up. All right, what are we, seven miles out? Let's get about 11 miles out to give us ourselves some space. Let's follow that runway heading though. We don't wanna get closer. All right, our speed is good. Our descent is good. Let's turn around now. We've been flying by hand for the past like eight minutes now, so no autopilot. Haven't had autopilot in a long time. And um, I was so busy blabbing and worried about speed and stuff. I wasn't watching my localizer and I just blew right over the airport. I don't know how I screwed that up. Oh, let's not descend that quickly. We're just gonna turn around. Oh boy, we need to turn more steeply than that. That's okay, we should have time. We're 10 miles out, so we should have time to find this runway in the fog, by hand. Holy cow. I don't know if this would be a Cat 3B approach or not, but normally I think you'd use autopilot almost to the bottom, but I don't know what my problem was, why I couldn't figure it out. Probably because of the back horse thing had me thrown off a little bit. All right, our speed is getting kind of high. No, 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 I did not mean to turn that much. We're too close to airport to turn that much. Here we go. Altitude we need to, yeah, we can come down now. Yep, altitude will be fine. There it is. Runway in sight. Keep that speed going. Nose down to keep that speed up. Flaps are where they should be. Gears down. Brakes are ready. Spoilers are armed. Speed is a little slow for final approach, but we're going to stay here. We are lined up with the runway based on the gauge and not looking out the window, although I can see the runway out the window. Using my gauge to line up, and we are. Keep our speed up, so we're going to point down. A little bit of throttle so we don't descend quite yet. And we are good to go. All by hand. I can't believe it. Now hopefully we can land with this new seating position. Speed is good. We see, Okay, so look. We're lined up with the runway. But we're pointing to the right because of the wind a little bit. See that? A little bit of left crosswind coming from 240. Alright, let's get some throttle going so we don't descend because we're below... Because now we are looking at the runway, we see all pav red pappy, which isn't good. We want a couple white on there. So throttle so we don't descend. Keep the speed with the nose. And I'm fighting this yoke, so trim it out so we don't fight so hard. There's one white on the pappy. You can see a little bit of crosswind here. Do the best we can. I don't care if we land long, as long as we don't bounce. So the plan is... To approach at that 120 because it's the first flag plus five plus gust puts us pretty much at the second flag. Just over the threshold, I'll kill throttle so that it just glides down and lands on its own. That's the plan. Keep her speed up, keep her speed up, keep her speed up. Descent rate is good. We got two and two. Keep her speed up though. It's in the fog. The fog oh, is getting wow. heavier. Oh, I need to turn my volume up personally so I can hear that. Hopefully, it's not bleeding through for you. And here we go. I'm going to go sterile, I think. I already talked through the landing, so enjoy.
Yes. Plenty. Ten. There we go. Reversers. Let me reverse your button. I can't remember. That was... I, whoa. 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 Okay. We're going to stop on a dime. Um, uh, brakes. Thank you. Um, yeah, that was not good. I'm really bummed out. Oh, go, go, go. I don't know how he stopped so fast. Probably because it was a slow landing because they're so small and light. <sighs> I'm not even going to talk about it. We'll just watch it together. You'll see. You'll see. All right, let's stop here and do a couple replays before we do any lights or anything because that can screw up after replay mode. So let's stop here. Set the parking brake and let's do some replays and see. Maybe it's not as bad as I think. I'm going in with very low expectations, so it can only be better from here. Let's have a look. First of all, look how windy this is. It's insane. And I was coming down and I flared and I guess I was going too fast because when I flared I floated and floated and floated and floated and floated. So I must have been going too fast, I guess. That's the only thing I can think of. Because when you flare you shouldn't float. When you flare you should come down gently. But let's see what really happened. I flared way too late and I floated because I was probably going too fast by a couple miles per hour. And But what was the actual touchdown like? Did I bounce? Nope. I didn't bounce. Okay. And super gentle on the nose wheel. Okay, that's not as bad as I thought. It was still not great because the only thing I can think of is I came in too fast and when I flared, I floated. But see, what's been happening is I flare and I sink and I drop like a rock and I bounce. So I'd rather have this. Don't get me wrong. I'd rather have this, but... um. That still wasn't very good. Uh, let's do a few more replay sensor here. Let's do some runway view if I can remember what that button is. So it looks gorgeous at least. Let's take a screenshot of that. There we go. And um, let's just watch me float along. So I've stopped bouncing, but now I've been floating. I mean, look at there's a lot of crosswind too. Actually, I should have come for that, but gosh, it was a smooth contact though with the ground, I guess. So there was good and bad. Let's check the um, the tower view. But overall, with the weather and everything, and not knowing the area, it was a very challenging manual approach. And that part was great. And here we go. Oh, I came in too high and too fast. And then I tried to make up for it, and I overdid it. See. Oh well, passengers wouldn't have noticed. Yay. Um, let's do a long distance passenger view for some sightseeing and then we'll wrap this thing up. All right, we'll try to get both directions here. So there's looking to the south. You can see the clouds coming down to the ground with the rain and everything. Let's look to the north quickly. Let's look into the north, but I think the south is more interesting. So let's go to the south. Yeah, it's obviously more densely populated to the north, but it looks really nice here. So let's just gonna come in and enjoy the approach. And the sun reflecting off the wing a little bit, and the clouds and the fog coming down on the ground, and the interstate with houses up against it. Maybe not in real life. Ah, uh, here we go. Just about to touch down. We're over the airfield now. And there's the boundary fence. And here we go. And any second now. There we go. Nice and gentle once we did make contact. Alrighty, let's wrap this thing up back in real time. Alright, so here we are. I don't know what may or may not have changed from going into replay mode because that always screws stuff up. But anyway, note the time on the clock. What time was it? 7 after so, 48 minute flight or so. That's not bad. Um, taxi lights on. They are. Landing lights can come off now. Runway turnway lights can come off now. Um, auto brake to disarm. Confirm flaps and spoilers are in. Flaps are in. Spoilers are in. Uh, what else? Pressure switch from flight to ground. And 
get to our parking space and shut this thing down. So where are we going? That's the big question. I don't know this airport. Whoops. I don't know this airport at all. Um. Oh, let's go right there. Those ramps are all full. We're just going to go straight and find a place to park. So parking brake off, get some throttle going, get comfortable in my chair. And I'll meet you at that gate where the fuel truck is probably. Alright, we don't have a flag person, so we're just going to kind of wing it ourselves. And try to park this thing. And then we'll shut this down. I know the video got long because I didn't split this up, but let's land to Alpha Flying. You know, there's a lot to do in the air. It's not just program an FMS, do a little bit of sightseeing and land. We have to do all the radio changes and VOR changes and everything. And then... There's a big plane to get started anyway and shut down so but it's all part of it um i'm trying to decide if i want to split up every 727 video into two so you'll see it both ways for a while until i figure out a format or whatever but let's just get this thing parked see if we can do it from the other side this is really tricky to do <laughs> we don't have a flag person so we need to do what we can do here let's just stay like this with the camera and get that lined up right on the line. We'll do the third line. Oh, I meant to do the third line, which will be right. Well, that third line. Stop right there. Set the parking brake. Shut this thing down. I've been with you for over an hour, and I enjoy every minute of it, but I know you probably have other things to do. So let's get this wrapped up. Taxi lights off. All these lights can come off. We'll keep those on, of course. GPU and air cart connection. Since we didn't use the APU, it just went right to the gate. Um, turn on, whoops, turn on external power. There we go. We can turn the fuel off then. Shut down the engines because we have external power hooked up. Outside lights can come off. Yep, battery off, which is over here. Battery off. There we go. And that one turns off because that's just the way they modeled it. Good. So we are still running. People can still get their stuff and see what they're doing. All right, and now from here, you can turn off whatever you want. You can mess with any switches that you want to. You can turn off all this stuff. Everything we turned on, you can turn off now. APU don't need it though, because we um, we went to air cart. So that is it. We don't need air stairs either. Whoa, hello. Um, I am going to adjust my seat view for 727 200 in freighter and then when we update my checklist I have a few changes to make so hopefully you enjoyed it welcome to green bay we're gonna hang out here for a couple days and then we're gonna fly south in this airplane i might throw in the smaller ga flight in between haven't decided but we're gonna stick with this airplane for quite a while i really want to get to know it better i know it really well i just want to be able to operate it better um it's a lot of work it's three person aircraft with one person so we're gonna keep working on our landings we're not gonna give up even though I want to, we're not going to. We're not going to give up. We're going to do a lot more of this aircraft. However, we are going to throw in some other GA flights. If you have a request, please let me know in the description below, in the comments below. Um, also, I've been thinking of maybe starting a Discord for all of my online stuff to come to one place because YouTube comments are getting difficult to manage. But we'll talk about that in more detail later. Well, I just hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. And I'll catch you. Well, one more thing I have to say. Please hit that like button so we can play the YouTube algorithm game. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time.